Hello everyone, this is Bobo the Vulture. Please don't uh, remove the memory card right now. All you folks at home that have access to the memory card, don't be removing it. Don't go removing my memory card. I won't go removing your memory card. So yeah, don't do that. Anyways, the saving is complete, so it's time to continue with Let's Play Gran Turismo 2. And now that we have all this money, it really probably is time to go back and make good on a promise. A promise I made near the beginning of this Let's Play series. Admittedly, it would have been in probably video five, six, six, or seven or something. I don't even know. But to take this starlet and make it absolutely everything it can be. It's my new car. It's my new jam. Let's look at its specs. What have I done to it? I gave it a racing muffler and a performance chip. We can do more than that. We can absolutely do more than that. Let's go to East City. Let's go to the Toyota dealership. We got it a racing muffler. Which is a good thing to do. Don't get me wrong. It would also be good to get it some racing slicks, some super softs. Let's purchase them and equip them. We got the uh, chip already. Let's do some engine balancing. It doesn't look like it's going to do that much, but every little bit will help. Port and polish. It's essentially for normal. It's essential for normally aspirated and supercharged engines alike. It makes it sound like we better do it, huh, guys? Yeah, I think we better do it. 174 horsepower. That sounds like where we want our starlet to be. Let's get it there. Max power has changed. There is the right way. There is the wrong way, and there is the max power way. Which is a lot like the wrong way, except faster. So they tell me. Now, I remember this car had a four-speed transmission. Let's go full racing so we can get fine-tuning gear ratios and all the rest of that stuff. We probably won't bother to do it, but we'll have the option of doing so. We're going to get a racing flywheel. Because why not? I'm going to shower the starlet with attention. Because I love the starlet. Carbon drive shaft that will uh, help our performance. It is a lighter weight component. Let's do a super cool triple plate clutch. All right. Let's buy some sports brakes. I'm surprised those are actually kind of plain looking brakes. The rotors on them don't even have any like cuts or holes drilled into them like uh, a lot of high performance brakes anymore seem to have. Oh, okay, brake balance controller. Probably won't ever end up adjusting the brake balance, but you know, we're doing it. We're doing it all for my baby. Okay, so here they actually do sports semi-racing, and then full customization is a different kit. Which I guess I won't bother with, because I am admitted I'm not a professional. I'm not being indoor... I'm not being, uh... I'm not being paid for doing this. I'm not a professional. I'm not being compensated for my Let's Plays. I do this for the love, the love of all of you. Loving you is easy cause you're beautiful. Everything that I do is cause loving you. So, everything that I do is cause loving you folks. Let's go to the Starlet meeting only for normal stall cars. 
I kind of like the paint job on this one anyways. Better than the uh, racing modifications. The thing we did look at, but, uh, eh. They weren't wow on me. Midfield, eh? Well, let's try it. We've been up and down this road at midfield before, so, uh... We'll have to see what kind of starlets are here. Because those turbo ones strike me as something that could be, uh, finely honed, but, uh... This thing is uh, twitchy and switchy on a dime. And it's got five speeds in the gearbox, so don't even try any funny business with us. Wow, this thing is twitchy! Wow, even fully kitted out, this thing is, uh... This thing's like a beast. It's like some kind of crazy monster of handling. Also, I'm hitting my rev limiter here. I got through that corner fairly well. So I got that. But I get the feeling everybody's going to catch up to me here because I did not bother to uh, adjust out my gear ratios. Which I probably can and should do in future for any other... Uh, Once you get used to it, after the first lap and the initial like, wow, is this what's happened to my beloved Starlet? This is definitely a car that needs some amount of counter steering. Everybody stay back. Stay back! Man, they're all just now clicking into a higher gear, whereas I'm at my rev limit. This is terrible news! It's almost as bad a news as... No, Zach. Seriously. Not right now. What are you trying to... Come on, hop up here and hang out over there. That's cool. Hey, we did it! We're the fastest starlet. We're an agent for starlet. We beat those 87 starlet turbos. Yes, we did. No, we're gonna continue here real quick. Let's look at what the other starlet does look like. It's a 98. There are only two 82 ones. They're both in uh, jetliner. Like they said that was silver, even though it's clearly green. Yeah! No, I'm not saving the game. But I will go to Tahiti Road and a couple of other places and show those rapscallions what's for!
start first of all. Sunday Cup. I'm going to go to the Tahiti Road because that is the place where we first attempted to send this little fella out. And things didn't go so well. So now it's time to get our revenge. So oh, yeah. Gears, full customization. Oh, L1 parts setting. Ah! That's more like it. Hey, auto set acceleration. So it's at 3. Let's set it to 10. Between sports and wide. And I'll tell you what, if we see that we have big gaps in our uh, in our gear ratios from uh, setting it to that many different uh, transmission speeds, we can go back, we can fix it. But I feel like this will still be plenty. And remember, folks, heck, this crowd isn't even our real... Uh, And even our real goal here. We just want to make sure that the car is uh, drivable. I mean, Tahiti Road's not the best place to find these things out. Gear ratio is maybe slightly wide, certainly for Tahiti Road. I think it would be better for some other courses, though. I think overall, it's still pretty good arrangement. See, it's still a nice tossable uh, jaunt. There you go, Starlet. Nice to know the success hasn't gotten to your head. You're still just a lovable, plucky funster of a car. Great success. You guys all feel pretty foolish now trying to take on Starlet Turbo. Ah, refreshing victory. Yeah, we're not going to win a new car off of that, I know. That's not the point here, folks. 
point is to embarrass those guys. The point is to make them look foolish. Unfortunately, we can't enter this in any of the front engine rear drive uh, championships. We could try the... Um, well, the FR we're pretty much not going to be able to deal with. This is way too powerful to compete in any of these. So, never mind the lightweight K-Car Cup entries. How about the Historic Car Cup? At Tahiti Road. I'm not sure this car actually qualifies as Historic. It does in modern terms. Um. Wait, wait, wait. Let's go back into settings. Let's go to parts settings. Gear. Take it back to seven. And start this race. We may have done a bad thing here, folks. Now that I'm thinking about it. Yeah. Our car as an 82 will be far newer than any of these things. And of course with its awesome uh, upgrades and everything, it will be far superior in every way to all of those guys anyhow. It's a good time. Yes, Zach, what is it? Come on. I swear to God, he only becomes affectionate when he sees that I'm playing a game. It may not be that it's specifically because he sees me playing a game. Maybe because he hears me talking. He's like, oh, who are you talking to? I'm going to come in here and talk. I'm going to hang out. I'm going to be Zach Dean. Uh. So that may be what's happening right now. He may be going, uh. That may be the story. And here come a bunch of classic cars from the 60s, 70s, and 80s. Well, mine's the only one from the 80s, but... So I'm trying to figure out roughly how old I was around the time that they, uh... sort of started to, uh, deftly slide in songs from the 80s. Spoiler alert, decade when I grew up. Um, into the classic rock rotation of classic rock stations. 60s, 70s, and 80s. Of course, nowadays there's 90s music. I mean, though, you'll get Nirvana on classic rock stations. I suppose, you know, they've been out of commission for very nearly 20 years at this point. I mean, Kurt Cobain, as a human being, has been gone for nearly 20 years at this point. So I guess, technically, it's all okay. There we go. Big victory. 
Yeah, I feel bad now. Uh, I'd forgotten that I could go to Europe Town to find a lot of these old antiques. That would probably be a good way to go about it. Plus, I actually do kind of really want a, uh, a Datsun 240. Toyota 2000 GT, very rare. One of the reasons is, um, yeah, like, the Datsun 240, not quite, but was fairly close to being a performance match for it, and was significantly less. Um, I mean, it was made of less expensive sort of handmade components, if I'm remembering right. I believe the 2000 GT had a, um, had an engine that was sourced from uh, Yamaha, but I may be confusing little bits and pieces of Kari history. A Kari history. All right. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to ruin your party, guys. I kind of did ruin your party. Not I kind of did mean. I obviously didn't really mean. Guys, I'm so sorry. Alright, let's go to the Compact Car World Cup. Anything that we can do here? We can do Rome short. We can do Seattle short. We can do the Autumn Ring. We may be matches for all these. How much, um... I'll have to see now what our, uh... How, how much horsepower are we getting out of this car now? We got 177, so we're actually way down on power in theory in this race, still. So if we win, we're being amazing. Just bear that in mind, folks. For your pipes, stick them in there and smoke it. It turns out that we are not the champions on this day. It's not for lack of awesome. Because that we have. Admittedly, our car is likely far more heavily modified than these other ones, even if its overall engine output is not as, uh, boss. Boy, you are just hanging with me, aren't you? the second lap well ahead of these pretenders to the throne of my starlet I feel like some of the physics of crashing in this game are a little bit wonky they tend to make cars spurt in odd directions. Now then, stay behind. Thank you. Thank you all for staying behind. Lancio, why? Why? Why, Lancio, why? New 
Dark Wire. Not saving the game for this particular thing. But yeah, like I I do appreciate there's there's just there's lots of uh, prize cars, which is fun. Um, I lose track of where you get them from, but of course that's what FAQs are for. Or having a better memory than me is another useful thing for that. But um, let's go ahead and try the Seattle Short Course here. I believe the Seattle Short Course, uh, if I'm remembering it right, may have some longer segments that would allow the uh, little starlet to uh, sort of stretch its legs a bit in terms of its uh, another Honda logo up there. That was terrible. I just got coasted around in a nice gentle slide across the entire world. Question is, can I recover? And if not, will this at least turn out to be a useful experience? Maybe this uh, stage did not have the uh, big section where I'll be able to stretch out the legs of this car that I thought after all. Still, well, maybe I can gain some ground here. Make or break most of everything with one heroic braking maneuver. And how dare you just bump me around like that? How dare you? to accelerate a little harder. Nope. Six one-thousandths of a second. Six one-thousandths of a second. Lancio, why? Alright. So, gotta do that one again. Still, no. Fifteen hundred bucks. Not bad, right? We're going to continue, we're going to enter the race again, and maybe I will tweak the gear ratios back down a little bit more once again. And then we'll get to Autumn Ring, and I'll have tuned it down a little bit too short for that. But the Autumn Ring might be even more difficult, though, because, as you can see, the horsepower restriction for it is slightly higher, even though we're already punching above our weight in that respect. Split the difference between three and seven at five. It's 
Pretty beefy acceleration, guys, gotta say. But is it actually smoother, folks? We're gonna find out. That wasn't the best way through that turn, but I've got low gearing now. You guys totally cannot accelerate me down this straightaway. There's just no way, dudes. a slight bump in this thing. You sort of go from a uh, tender and uh, beautiful drift to what's happened here. Oh, I'm not winning this now, but I guess I'm close enough to the end of it that I really should see it through. Just for pride's sake. the off chance I don't finish last. Well, that chance is getting more and more off as time goes by. Yeah, I finished last. No, I'm embarrassing the starlet. Oh, well, at least it was, uh, taken, taken to task a little bit by a Demio, which is a proper, proper car for this sort of thing. It's not a proper racing car, folks. But, uh, as I did mention, it is uh, a very similar car to the... Uh, well, it is sold in uh, North America now as the Mazda 2. The modern version of them. And, uh, I've had a chance to drive one around, and it's super fun. I... I don't really, like, I fit behind the, the wheel of it, but uh, I can't get the seat quite as far back as I would like to be, like, comfortable in it. But um, just in terms of, the, like, driving dynamics, the, like, steering response, and uh, just the way it handles and things like that, it's super fun. It's peppy. It's, uh, it's, it's agile. It's obviously not like you put your foot down and there's an amazing force of accelerative power or anything like that. There's there's not that, but um gets out of its own way and it's uh it handles really nicely. It's tossable. Let's try this again. tidier. It's looking tidier in that I haven't crashed.
So these guys, it's as though Luther instructed them, they're staying right on my ass. Probably could have stayed in fourth for that. But you know what? I want to be safer rather than sorrier. I don't want to be sorry. Oh boy. There we go. Some more victory for the Starlet. Look at some of these other weird cars. Oh, there's a Vitz. There's a Saxo. And a Lupo. Look at the little Lupo. It's darling looking. Okay, let's get out of here. Let's skedaddle. Four grand and another new car. We're not saving the game. We're going to continue. I tell you what, we'll gauge whether or not it looks like the Starlet is going to be capable of pulling off any uh, slickness here at the Autumn Ring. Um, but I'm not going to get into doing a whole bunch of extra multiple tries and stuff, because this video has already gone, at least in terms of one of my videos, a little on the long side. Also, it's been a while since I've raced at Autumn Ring. I remember Autumn Ring Mini very well, of course, from the uh, first Gran Turismo game. I don't know that Autumn Ring Mini actually shows up in this one. I think it may be something you can unlock. It's odd. There's a couple of things that are unlockables in this one. No, it's, it's in the arcade disc, I think. Maybe that was it. And maybe you can unlock it for simulation mode by doing some other things. I don't know. I'll forget. It's not a big issue. Okay, here it is. I was uh, losing track of where I was on the track. Here is the... Yeah, that turn is going to be where, if bad things happen to my car, it will be because of that corner. Or maybe that one. Come on, there we go. Jeez. Oh, Everybody just ease off a little, okay? Everybody except me. I want to win. So the rest of you just ease off, okay? quite the way I meant to maneuver through there, but it worked, so I'll accept that it happened and move on. Hey! Good! It doesn't really help me when I'm in the middle of a long slide and one of the other cars just sort of bumps into me as though I do not exist. Which they have a bad tendency to do.
Come on, get back on the track. There we go. Starlet is the king of the compact cards. Blast from the past, bitches. Oh, your fancy 98 Honda logo. Pfft. Your new Peugeots. Who needs them? I got an 82 Starlet. Got an 82 Starlet. You can't do nothing about that. We gonna save the game? No. We are going to continue. Now we've done a lot of work, done a lot of races with this car. It's time to go see what kind of benefits we've gotten out of doing all this hard work. Let's take a look, folks. It's in a book. A reading rainbow. Now let's actually just go to the garage, huh? The garage is a fun place. It's a place where dreams come true. We got a Mugen CRX3. Which isn't really a CRX at all. It's Civic Del Sol. Here's the information. Yeah, third generation model. Christened the Del Sol. Yeah. Front engine, front drive layout, distinctive styling, mid engine like touches. Yeah, it was. The electrically operated power roof. Oh, this is a fancy one that had... Yeah, I guess they made some with a roof that you that you could just, like... When the roof was... When the top was open, the trunk raised and the roof slid under it to the rear. Trunk lowered back to its original position. Yeah, I think most models were... In the U.S. were equipped with a manual roof. But... I don't want to tell tales out of school. Um... Yeah, this... The Pro is... Yeah, it had a manual roof, so it was based on that. Ah, uh, the f what first caught the viewer's eye were the arrow parts. They're all about the, like, oh, here's the special Mugen edition that has sportier looking arrow parts. The essentially unchanged engine generates the same power as it does in the Civic. Sports, imp a thoroughly tested sports exhaust system that created a vastly improved feeling, thrilling sound, and visual improvement. Jeez. I know that this isn't the only thing that they ever did. This isn't the only kind of thing Mugen ever did, but every Mugen edition that I seem to read about in this game just makes it sound like they're the king of the posers. I know that they make actual performance parts. Hey, it's a Witz. It's a Witz and a Futz and a Fitz and a Fetz and a... The Echo is the US version of the car sold in Japan as the Witz and in Europe as the Yaris. Used to be sold in the U.S. as the uh, Echo. Now it is sold here as the Yaris. So the Yaris is... It could be seen as a replacement for the later cell. And yeah, I mean, it, it fits the same segment. Unconventional styling. Cab forward and cab upward. Very sophisticated powertrain. It's 108 horsepower. Oh my gosh. The Echo is more no boring transportation device. Appliance, well, puts the fun and functional. So that's cool, right, guys? There is a Vitz trophy, I imagine. We'll eventually maybe want to use it for that. And we got a Clio. We could take Mistress Clio. Straw yellow. Actually, that's probably not the Clio that we want to use for the Clio Cup. But that's okay, anyways. And the last is that Lupo that we saw. Lupo, 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 Lupo. This one is in soft blue. But anyways, folks, I think the Starlet done come good. What do you think? I think we've managed to uh, accomplish a great deal with uh, our first car. As promised, I did eventually manage to go back 
and tune it up and give those bullies the Tahiti Road what for. So when we come back next time, we will uh, we'll find more new driving adventures on which to go. This is Bobo the Vulture. This is Let's Play Gran Turismo 2. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye now.